What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. We are back doing some rugby preview videos. I haven't been able to do one of these for so long, not since the Autumn Nations Cup, so we get to go into the Six Nations. But if anyone hasn't seen these videos before, what we do is we check on a game of rugby in the background, playing on Rugby 20. I always play as the weaker team, just so you guys have some interesting visuals. And then at the same time, we're going to go through the real life teams that have been named, and I'll put some stuff up on screen for you guys to see the teams, and we can go through who we think is going to perform well, who we think is going to go bad. Let's Let's get into this. It's going to be the first game of the Six Nations, Italy versus France. Let's get this game kicked off. Alrighty, so Tommaso Alan's going to get us kicked off. Not that he's starting in this Italian team, unfortunately. Garbisi is doing so well. So we've done a couple of videos leading up to this Six Nations. It's been a lot of fun to do, including the most popular video ever on the channel about who was going to win the Six Nations, where I was going through and predicting the outcome of every game. And in that video, I did predict that the first game of the Six Nations, this Italy versus France game, was going to be a bit of a blowout. And unfortunately, I think my suspicions have been confirmed. I assumed France would sort of put a bit of of a not a B team but definitely a lesser team on and Italy would go full strength playing at home wow we managed to actually get a weird try there that was <laughs> a bit unusual uh, but having a look at this Italian team I will check it on screen for you guys uh, as you can see this Italian team is not the strongest team I think they could have picked uh, they've taken a lot of big changes at the front here putting in Treore and Riccioni. For anyone who has seen my other videos, you know my pronunciation is terrible for both uh, the Italian and the French team, so I'm awfully sorry about my pronunciation. But it does mean that uh, Fischetti and Zalocci are both not in this starting team, which is a big, big call. They are on the bench, but they uh, won't be starting off. Lazzaroni and CC, I think, is a better lock combination. They'll be doing pretty well there. Negri, Johan Meyer, and Lamaro playing number eight, which is interesting. I did think they would maybe put Mbanda on in that number eight shirt. They haven't gone for it. So this, to me, is a bit of a weaker 1-8 to eight for Italy, and I thought they were going to go full strength playing France at home. It's going to be a tough game. They know it's going to be a tough game. So I thought maybe they'd put on a full strength team in order to try and combat what the France team is going to bring and maybe even try and get a win. I think it's a bit unlikely they were going to be able to win, but I thought they'd give it a real good go. We did see what they did in that Autumn Nations Cup against Scotland. They can hold out if they have their team together. Unfortunately, this just isn't the same team we got to see in that Autumn Nations Cup. They've had a lot of people out a lot of people injured so i think this is a, a pretty good one to eight for experimental purposes as you will have seen if you've watched the team announcement for the italy team that i did they've definitely brought in a whole bunch of new forwards trying to work out some better combinations so i think this is going to be a good game to test we know the france team is going to bring a lot of big players there are a lot out as uh, people have happily mentioned in the comments of my france video because i happened to release the video on the same day they did a big announcement that rendered my video pretty useless but that's how life goes so hopefully they'll be managed to compete at least moving on to the backs stephen varney's going to take the number nine shirt which is surprising i did think that callum Brayley would maybe take this number nine shirt they've gone for stephen varney to me, if they're going to go with this sort of undercapped, sort of underused team and try and get a few experimentations in, I would actually prefer if they went full experimental and maybe put a lot of low cap players on knowing they were going to lose the game but get some real good valuable experience Stephen Varney is a great number nine I think he's a good call to me though I probably would have gone for Callum Braley there just to have got him a bit more experience on the pitch I think with Violi out they're going to want to try and make as much ground as they can with some of the younger players and some of the lesser capped players number 10 Paolo Garbisi of course he is Tommaso Alan just doesn't get a look in anymore for that number 10 shirt so Paolo Garbisi will be taking that looking forward to seeing him he did some real good work in the last six nations and of course in that Autumn Nations Cup. He does work very hard, so going to be looking forward to seeing a bit of him. Montana Iuani going to be taking that left wing shirt. Uh, I did call for my ultimate team of Italy. I was going to put him on the right wing. That was so that Bellini could go on the left wing. A couple of people disagreed with that and said he'd be much better on the left wing. That's where he belongs. Obviously, I'm wrong. <laughs> As the Italian coach wants to go the same way. Uh, putting Montana Iuani on that left wing. I haven't seen a lot from him, but I'm really looking forward to seeing him play. I think he's a rapid player, and hopefully he can break down that wing a little bit. I think it's going to be a tough French team for him to try and get room against to make some good runs, but hopefully he can do a lot. And now this is where the big call is coming in this game for me, which I'm really surprised at. Ignacio Brex taking over that 12 shirt rather than Carlo Canna. Now this was a big call for me. I did mention in that previous video that I was going to have Carlo Canna here and Marco Zanon at 13, with the idea that potentially Ignacio Brex could go into that 13 shirt and play a much more defensive role. Zanon is such an attacking player 
but I think this is a bit of a mistake in all honesty. Putting Brex on at 12 as a super defensive number 12 and then having Zanon on at 13 as a super aggressive attacking 13 doesn't really lend itself too well. You have one all about defense, one all about attack, and you lose Carlo Canna to the bench in which it means that you then lose your actual playmaker in that centre partnership. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works out. Maybe they didn't know what the France team was going to throw at them. Maybe they'll try and mix that up in-game a little bit. Uh, I also believe Ignacio Brex, the only footage I've seen of him is him playing at 13. So they've actually taken him out of position to attempt this. I don't know even why they probably wouldn't have put the lesser-capped player in his preferred position and maybe tried Zanon at 13 or instead put Kanner on at 12 and then have Brex at 13 and create a defensive partnership. Maybe that could have worked better. I think there's going to be a flaw there, and I think France are definitely going to try and utilise that. Lucas Brandio taking that 14 shirt and Trula at 15. Again, to me, I would swap them around. They are sort of interchangeable, but from the play that I've seen, Trula, although he's actually quite a good wing, actually, he's still quite a young lad, and I don't think he's quite competent enough in that backfield to be able to deal with a high-pressure team like France, especially with how many kicking options France have, I think he's going to be facing a big team coming at him. So I think Trula's going to have his work cut out. Sparandio will do fine on that wing, I'm sure, but I would actually prefer it to be the way around. I think Sparandio is better in the backfield and has a little bit more game knowledge, if you want to put it that way, in being able to deal with the kicks that are going to be coming over, with some of the counter runs, some of the pressure that's going to be coming back at him. And then quickly, just looking through, we have mentioned a couple of the subs there, of course, for Sketi, Zalocci. Uh, they're trying out some of the new boys. Uh, Ruza or Ruzza, I think, is going to be coming on at some point. Looking forward to seeing him. Mbanda will probably come on for Negri, seeing as he hasn't started in that eight shirt. I assume he'll come on at six. Canone, I'm hoping to see a lot from him. And, of course, Palazzani and Carlo Canna. Maybe Carlo Canna started on the bench in order for him to come on at either 10 or 12 later in the game, depending on how it goes. But I think playing France, they know they're going to concede points. I don't know if it was the correct move to go for such a defensive player like Brex when you could have had Carlo Canna on. But there we go. That's going to be the Italian team, guys. So let's move on to talk about this French team. So France have had a lot of changes to make going into this tournament. Of course, I made my France video where I basically just got everything wrong. Everyone was annoyed. There were players missing that I put in the team. Basically, what had happened is I'd seen a team sheet come out. I'd made a video. It had taken me so long to get around to editing the video that by the time I got it on the channel, uh, basically the whole team had changed, which wonderful. So there we go. So they've had a lot of people drop out, losing some big players. Camille Schatt no longer in. Vaca Tower no longer in. So there's going to be big players. Is missing but one thing I was very surprised at reading this team sheet is how massive this French team is this is probably the best French team you could probably make of out of who was left apart from maybe one or two changes and I am really surprised by this they've gone all out for this one starting off at the front of course by as I now think it's pronounced rather than Bale some people were quite helpful in pronunciations in the comments in the last video Marshan will take that number two position and house in that number three so it's a strong front three and I think that will probably be much stronger than the Italian front three they will have a lot of work cut out at the scrum time especially with LaRue and Valempsa just pushing in the in the lock department there there's some big big boys in that four and five I think they're going to really struggle I think this France team is going to be absolutely massive uh Cretin, Olivon and Aldrit are a big back three to have in Aldrit actually lost his position at one point during all these team mix-ups and players going in and out so it's nice to see him back in I actually think Gregor Aldrit is such a such a talented player actually he's a very supporting eight he does give away quite a few penalties which I think is something you'll want to cut out of his game I think he got a, a yellow card in the in the last six nations I might be wrong there but overall a one to eight is very very strong from France they obviously want to lay down a bit of a marker probably want to get make sure they get that bonus point in against this Italy team number nine Dupont of course their first choice scrum half they're going to be going big looking forward to seeing some work from him I'm sure he'll be a big supporting runner I'm sure he'll be in a couple of people's fantasy teams uh, uh, Jalibert taking that number 10 shirt. Again, first choice fly half out of everyone that was left. No Entomac in the team through injury. Villiers on the left wing, uh, which is the call that I made. I think it's a great pick. An X7s player, very fast, very strong player. I think going up against people like Sparandia on that left wing, I think he's probably got a good chance to get round him. Teddy Thomas taking the right wing. Looking forward to seeing a bit from him. That's going to be a real fight for pace on that right wing for France. It's going to be him going up against Yuani. I think the two of them together is just going to be a race for speed. Really looking forward to seeing that. Ficou and then of course Vincent takes over from Vaca Tower, no longer in the team. Uh, so he's going to be making his good start 
out there. I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. And then at number 15, the call that a lot of people disagreed with, actually, but I, I thought was completely correct. Dulan going in at that number 15 shirt. I think Bryce Dulan is a superb number 15. He was my player of the tournament for the Autumn Nations Cup. I thought he was absolutely superb. I think he fully deserves that position. I think this is going to be a real strong French team. There's a lot of very aggressive attacking players here. So I think they're definitely going to go for scoring points. Not necessarily the best defensive French team that we've seen, uh, especially going from that last Six Nations and the Autumn Nations Cup, we've been able to see what Sean Edwards have done with the French team and making them a hell of a lot more defensive. But a lot of these players are very aggressive forward-facing players and maybe a little bit weak in the defensive areas. So it's going to be interesting to see how they manage to cope with the pressure that Italy will put up. But I think they know if they can score enough points by just attacking, it will break the spirits of Italy and they'll probably be able to run away with this game. We'll quickly look at the finishers. Borgeri, Gross, Aldi. Gary, Serin, Carbonell, Damien Pernod. So there's a very much a bit of a divide here for me in terms of they've got a very, very strong starting 15. And I think this will work. And if they can carry the, this through the tournament, I think they're in with a chance of winning. I think having people like Van Son rather than Vakatawa could be a bit of a weak link in the chain, but he's still a good player and I think he'll make the most of it. However, the finishers are very obviously to me going to be sort of the B players coming in. I think Damien Pinot is actually very good, but I th I don't think he's quite managed that shirt that he's going to take over. I imagine he would want to take left wing where Villiers is, but I think there could be a bit of an issue there in terms of the subs coming on. It's maybe not the strongest subs that they can add. Obviously, they've had a lot of injuries and a lot of players out, so hopefully it will be able to work out for them. But overall, I think it is a much stronger French team than I was even expecting. I was expecting them to go a little bit 50-50, try and rest some players for the later games, but they haven't done that. They've gone full force for this Italy game. So in terms of prediction what do we think i think it's got to absolutely be called it a france win but what am i going to say in terms of how many points they're going to score i i looking at this team i think france are bringing the stronger team i think italy haven't got their strongest team either i think this is probably the best 15 france could put on at this time so in all honesty i think i'm going to be really mean to all my italian fans i'm awfully sorry but i think i'm going to call france to win by 40 I feel like that's a huge number to call out. I just think this is such an attacking looking French team. Maybe the idea of having Brex on that Italian team is a great move just to try and stop some of these players. I think the scrum is going to be very dominant. I think there's a lot of French people here who can get good turnovers. But overall, I think it's going to be a big French team. But that was the teams, guys. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Who do you think is going to win? Who do you think has brought the best team? Do you think Italy will be able to score a try? Do you think Italy will be able to score a win? How far do you reckon they'll be able to go? Is this the best that France have to waffer will they be able to take it through to the rest of the six nations will they be able to win the six nations with this team obviously they've had an awful lot of injuries and an awful lot of key players missing so it could come back to really bite them and if they end up having a few injuries in games like this putting a big team on against Italy and going on to lose, you know, maybe two or three players to injury. If there's any red cards, yellow cards, could be dangerous. But let me know down in the comments what you guys think. We are going to be doing this for every game for the Six Nations, so make sure you subscribe just to keep up to date with all the videos as they're coming out. I hope you've all enjoyed today, guys. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.